it over to Whip Scalise. Thank you, Jamie. Thank all my colleagues uh, for joining us here today. Tomorrow marks the one-year anniversary since Joe Biden took the oath of office as President of the United States. And even if you were grading on a curve, by all objective reporting, he would get an F for failing the American people on all the challenges that we're seeing our country face right now. As many of my colleagues here talked about, just start with COVID. This is with this is the signature campaign platform that Joe Biden ran on. How many times during the campaign did candidate Joe Biden say, I'm going to shut down the virus? He actually bragged that he had a plan on day one to combat the virus. And then what happened just a few weeks ago before governors across the country? He admitted he doesn't have a plan. There is no federal solution, and he dumped it on the governors of our state because he's failed over and over again. There was a bombshell report that came out over the Christmas break that laid out that back in October, President Biden was presented with a plan for testing for all Americans all across the country, 750 million tests for everybody to be ready during Christmas because they predicted there would be this surge. They actually saw it coming. And they presented the plan to Joe Biden, who said he was going to shut down the virus as a candidate. And you know what Joe Biden did in October? He rejected that plan. I wonder if today when Joe Biden holds his press conference to talk about, he can't talk about any of his accomplishments as president for a year, but he surely should have the opportunity to address whether or not he rejected that plan and why. We've posed this to other administration officials. We haven't gotten an answer yet. Uh, Jamie Comer and I asked the heads of the Select sub Subcommittee on Coronavirus and the Oversight Committee to have a hearing into this testing failure by the Biden administration, and they don't want to have a hearing on it. They seemed overeager to talk about transparency and accountability until all of a sudden they were accountable for more deaths from COVID under the Biden administration than they had when they walked in the door. And let's remember, when Joe Biden took that oath of office <clears throat> a year ago tomorrow, he walked in with President Trump's Operation Warp Speed that had delivered not one, not two, but three proven and effective vaccines. What has President Biden done to advance on that? Nothing. What has he done to go look into more therapeutic options, to look into natural immunity? Again, on testing, the failures that we see where people right now have to wait hours in lines to try to get testing when he was presented with a plan in October and rejected that plan. Kind of hard for him to say now that it should have happened because he was the one who stopped it from happening. Are we having any oversight into the origins of COVID? As Jamie Comer and Jim Jordan pointed out, there are reports out there that Dr. Fauci's advisors, he's got a team of advisors that some of them were suggesting years ago that over a year ago that this started in the lab in Wuhan. We had a hearing on the Republican side because the Democrats don't want to have a hearing on this into the origins of COVID. And every scientist on the panel said it's when you look at the genetic scheme of this virus, it couldn't have been created from a bat to an animal to a human. It had to be genetically manipulated, probably in the lab in Wuhan, because that's the only place that they're doing that level of coronavirus research. And yet still to this day, Democrats refuse to have a hearing because they don't want to hold China accountable if it turns out that they were directly involved in not only having that virus created in the lab, maybe there were taxpayer dollars through gain-of-function research that were involved in that, but also then why China lied to the United States and the rest of the world in those immediate days and weeks and months afterwards where we could have saved millions of lives globally, uh, but that didn't happen. Uh, and then, of course, as we saw, uh, candidate Joe Biden talk so much about following the science and President Joe Biden has been manipulating the science. We saw the reports, as Jamie Comer talked about, that the teachers, union bosses, union bosses were able to manipulate a report by the CDC on school reopenings. Uh, think of how destructive keeping schools closed has been to our young kids over this last year and a half. We're going to look back years later and say, how did anybody let that happen uh, when Kids today are not getting the same learning environment outside the classroom as they are inside the classroom. All the science says the kids should be back in school. And the, all the things that they're not learning, all the damage that's being done, the suicides, the drug overdoses, 
And when Joe Biden had an opportunity to stand up for their kids, he instead chose to stand with the teachers unions against those kids and manipulated a report that kept kids out of school. Joe Biden still to this day, a year into his presidency, still doesn't have an FDA commissioner. And the FDA has been called a rudderless ship in the middle of a pandemic. And he ran on shutting down the virus. And you wonder why it's not shut down. Those are the kind of accountability questions that we've been raising. The Democrats don't want to have accountability and transparency, but when we get the majority, we will. That is going to be something that we aggressively pursue to get answers to these questions that hopefully Joe Biden will answer later today. I wonder if anybody's going to be asking him that question. With that, we'll be happy to take some questions. Yeah. Thank you. Um, I wanted to ask,